My name's Guy Kesteven. I've been a professional bike reviewer for nearly 25 years. And if you've watched the live ride review of On One's Boot Zipper, you'll know that it's the pub bike that doesn't care how far away the pub is. So what, I mean, this is the tech talk around. So what is the tech behind that claim and kind of behind the character of the bike? Well, first off, Boot Zipper is steel frame with a steel fork. So it's not the lightest beast around. That's a kilo and a half of fork sitting there. And the frame's about two and a half, it's under two and a half kilos. So it's good, sturdy, double butted steel. But as you can see, there's some really nice detail all the way through. If you look at the uh, fork mount there, it's really nicely machined out at the back. You've got these little nice terminals on there for the 100 by 12 mil axle. You've got three bottle cage bosses. You've got three bottle cage bosses on there, which will take a bottle cage. Or as you can see on the drop bar bike up there, they'll also take uh, fork bags. Uh, you've got ring reinforced headset. You know all the gussets are done properly, so they're open ended at the back, so they just spread load down the side there. And you can see the welding's really, really neat. And also because they've gone for this uh, clear lacquer finish, you can see the little detail in there, the uh, brass around the welds on them. So. Uh, and again, moving back there, a really neat little pocket on that through axle at the back. And the tube curves are just, it's just a classic sort of steel frame and really, really nicely made. Uh, little dark detail in there. And then down here, you've got sort of the classic on one chainstay plate, which gives masses of mudroom on tire room. I mean, this is a 2.1 in here, but you can go 2.4. In fact, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if you could squeeze a 2.5 in there. Uh, and again, round the back, if you look at the detail on the uh, brake mount on here, it's really neat little posting to uh, carry that post mount and it just keeps the whole brake inside the rear seat stays as well. So it's not gonna get, you know, if you're in the back of beyond or it's getting chucked on top of a Land Cruiser for a bit of a road transfer on top of an Indian bus. Even if you're running panniers, it just keeps the whole disc brake out of the way of any luggage or damage. And as you can see on this uh, 650B bike here, it's got a matte lacquer finish. Whereas on the 2090 bike, it's got a gloss lacquer finish. But apart from that, it's pretty much the same tube set. Uh, in terms of bike builds, uh, this is pretty much the standard 29er SRAM SX build. So you've got a Eagle SX rear mech, which means you've got an 11 to 50 cassette on there, huge super wide ratio cassette, and the long cage mech on the bottom to handle it. And up front, you've got a SX uh, crank uh, with a double bottom bracket and X-Sync 2 chain ring. So you've got that little double scoop on the chain ring there. And it's a steel chain ring as well, so that's going to be super durable. And again, it's heavy. I mean, that, that cassette on the back weighs a ton. But even with uh, these level hydraulic brakes on there, you're looking at a bike that only costs 700 quid complete. And normally it comes with a riser bar, but for the purposes of these films, I fitted this Jeff bar which is a homage, I guess you could say, to uh, Jeff Jones, even though on one has spelt it uh, Jeff, G-E-O-F-F, -F, rather than Jeff Jones, which is Jeff Jones. Uh, if you don't know about Jeff Jones, Google him. Uh, fascinating bloke, built some beautiful uh, ISO truss bikes with a cantilevered fork on the front, and he kind of popularized this double fronted bar here but what i like about it is the fact that compared to a normal bar not only you've got this nice back sweep for a super light steering feel and a nice upright cruising feel but it means you can get your nose bag in there and still have decent hand positions and uh, so it comes with a standard riser bar i've just added that but apart from that this is pretty much the standard spec with these super banner racer uh, comet tires and then i'll call them a comet hard pack but i can remember when these were well, before gravel, uh, when these are just a 29er race tyre, and they are super, super quick and really, really comfy, even this 21, even this 2.1 size. Uh, and then moving back, oh, and the other change I made, uh, put this uh, this tech, uh, this Rector tech uh, saddle on there. Uh, the standard Planet X build has rather a rather narrow saddle on there. So I went for a broader saddle designed for more upright riding and higher mileage riding. Uh, and it's also, because it's nicely padded, you can ride it in just jeans if you're just going to the pub. And as this is kind of the idea of this bike is, you know, just a super utility, you know, really affordable utility bike that also happens to ride great and have all the bike packing fixtures you need. I figured a saddle that you could ride without having to have uh, proper cycling gear on is uh, probably a good move on that one. 
Now this bike here, uh, I've done a bit more in terms of spec, uh, tweaking the spec. And this is the Monster Cross version, so you're getting drop bars on there and you're getting SRAM Apex drop bar levers. And it normally does come with the Brian drop bar, but for my build, I went for 460 mil width rather than 420 mil width, just to give me a bit more leverage there. And again, I've gone for this uh, Tech Saddle, uh, just to give a bit more upright comfort, a bit higher mileage comfort. And then down on the wheels, I've gone for the lightest weight spec that Planet X had on the uh, Fulcrum uh, Red Zone wheels. So they're actually a uh, 650B race wheel there, quite a nice 1700 gram wheel. And just to kind of, in keeping with this uh, nice uh, matte grey frame, I went with these Vittoria Anthracite Wall, AKA race tyres as well in a 2.2. Because like I say, I mean, again, this bike can take up to a 2.4. There's loads of space in there. But I thought a 2.2 race tyre kind of really amps up the kind of more responsive, more agile feel of this 650B bike. Uh, and while the bikes normally come as standard with an Avid uh, BB5 cable brake, this one's actually running these uh, brand new uh, Riva M MTX1 calipers, uh, which are a really nice sort of double-sided cable disc brake, rather like the uh, TRP Spire. Uh, and I have to say, I've been really impressed. It could do with compressionless outer. I just stuck some standard uh, normal brake outer on there. And on a super long run like that, it could really do with proper compressionless brake outer. Uh, so that's probably one thing I'd change on there. But apart from that, you know, surprisingly good, surprisingly controlled. I mean, obviously you're getting more power and more control with the, uh, with the levels on this uh, hydraulic bike. It just, you know, it's a crisper feel because it's a hydraulic setup. But for complete sort of fail-safe long distance touring, you can't really beat a cable break because pretty much everywhere has some form of cable that you can bodge a repair on. Whereas hydraulics, you can't always manage to repair them. What else have I done? I mean, obviously, as you can see, uh, the bikes are equipped with pod sacks. Uh, it's just the standard seat pack on the back there. Uh, come, that's the small one, there's a large one as well, but we're, you know, we're only nipping over the hill to the pub. Didn't need too much luggage with us and there's also a uh, pod sacks bag on the front there so uh, and those come with and actually you can see they get them with this bespoke carrier that fits onto the fork there so again just a really nice neat setup and i really like the way they added stability to the front end of the bike to be honest and then on the front of the 29 here you can see that's just 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 a little camera bag version it's not a full barrel roll but again i just wanted something that didn't completely get in the way but gave me enough room for snacks and as well as these fork bosses uh you've got uh two bottle cages inside the mainframe and another one under there so plenty of room for a drink or fuel bottles or tool kegs and as you can see it's dn6 uh, aerospace quality crow molly if you're wondering what dn6 is i can remember the forum thread years years back when brant was chatting about uh, what the bike was made of and someone says oh you know does has it has it got a proprietary name because the old on one inbred used to be 853 the very first ones and then they started doing them in their own double body chromo because it was a hell of a lot cheaper and rode pretty much the same and he said oh yeah it's called dn6 and they were like oh is that the alloy it's made from he's like no it's the postcode of our warehouse in uh, doncaster and uh, good to see that that kind of that in joke has stuck there really but as you'd hope full and obviously cen tested frame and it's as tough as old boots but the surprising thing is is if you watch the live ride review uh you know we've just ridden me and jimmy have just ridden 50k on these today and they have been remarkably smooth and remarkably cultured for such an affordable bike i've been really really blown away by how much fun we've had riding these bracer bikes i mean we swapped around we got over to the craven inn for lunch i was on the 650 going up over green now and then jimmy swapped on to uh, then I swapped onto the 29er for coming back over Poxstones. And as you'd expect, they each give a very different ride. 29er takes a bit longer to accelerate. It's a bit more sedate in terms of the handling. And especially with these Jeff bars bringing your weight back and sitting you more upright, it's very much more of a sedate cruiser ride. Whereas this bike, the 650, a little more peppy, especially with these lightweight wheels on, these race tyres on. It's got a bit more pep, a bit more kind of agility about it, a bit more whip around. And with the drop bars on, it cruises really nicely. Into the, we had a stinking headwind over the top by Stump Cross Caverns. And, you know, it's a more aero feel. Uh, and I would say, it's, it, you know, compared to a normal riser bar, it's obviously got a lot more bar positions. But that Jeff bar actually gives you a load of bar positions on there. That's what's great about the whole Planet X setup. I mean, they do produce the standard build bikes, which are, you know, superb value. And even on that basis, they're still 
things that you can tweak and you can always change bar width, stem length, crank length, that kind of thing. But you've also got the choice of building something that's completely custom to yourself. You know, I think there's over, when I was looking through the list of parts we could have fitted to this bike, there's about 10,000 different items on there, you know, for bar, from bar ends and bar tape through to God knows how many bottle cages. And if you're wondering why I didn't go black to match all the rest of this bike, uh, I just tend to find black bottle cages look really, really scruffy uh, once the paint starts to wear off them. So I went for silver because silver always looks silver. And also they tend not to mark up bottles as much. But, uh, you know, obviously whatever however you want to build your bike up you can build it up from their parts picker and still get that excellent value they even do you a diy option where you can come down to rotherham and build the bike yourself uh with you know with guidance from their top mechanics they've got some superb mechanics down there you know ex-pro races all sorts of lads uh, working down in rotherham at Planet X and on one building bikes and they'll kind of mentor you through your own bike build like so that's a grand day out and I'll post I did that myself to, when we we're building these bikes and I'll post that video up on the, as a mini link and I'll also put obviously put the live ride review up there so that's been the tech talk around thanks very much for your time watching that thanks very much to Planet X for sponsoring these videos uh, make sure you watch the live ride review where me and jimmy take these bikes right over out of this dale over until the next one go for a pub lunch and come back again because that seemed like a cracking thing to do on a beautiful february afternoon and also uh make sure you watch there's a little build video as well where mike and i actually put these bikes together and also if you like what i'm doing with the channel and you want to see more behind the scenes stuff and you want to support me making more unpaid for videos uh sort of just generally letting the letting the channel thrive then please consider joining my patreon subscription channel where there's a lot more exclusive early release stuff and occasionally a bit of merch as well so i'll put a link up there and click for notifications and subscribe to the channel because that really helps me grow helps me get more bikes in and more test kit in for videos yeah. as well as these bikes i'm going to be doing a load more planet x and on one bikes because they've got a whole new range of hardtails coming through as well as some established classics so i'm going to be working my way through all of those over the next couple of months so thanks very much for your time i'm guy kestivan this has been guy kest tv and i i've been chatting about and riding on one's absolutely splendid complete bargain but surprisingly cultured and super versatile boot zipper 650 and 29er